Well, good day to you all. Today we have a pocket chronometer, which a customer of mine uh, bought at a really good price, but for good reason as well. As you can see, it has uh, a number of parts that are missing. And um, what we can see right now is not the half of it. But going through my parts assortment, I was able to find a number of parts that were able to fit and work on the piece. Um, but if you look closely, uh, you can see that they're not well matched either. So we'll try to remedy that in the course of time and find things or make things that work better in the future. But we're going to proceed and look at the internal mechanism. Once I took it apart, um, there was a couple issues that were very glaring. Um, here's a close-up of the escape wheel and you can see that the teeth, the tip of each teeth are bent over and um, in one case the a tooth has been broken off but only in one tooth. Um, and also the detent itself uh, the chronometer detent is missing altogether. So I suspect that a part like the locking jewel on the detent broke and allowed the escape wheel to spin free and as it interacted with other parts it bent over the tip of the teeth and uh, broke the teeth. And so that is the first thing that we're going to try to remedy. Now, my first uh, plan of attack was to try to make uh, a new escape wheel, and each time I tried, um, I came up with the same issue that actually this escape wheel has, and that is as I would cut the, the profile of the tooth, the, the very tip of the tooth, which is very thin, would bend over, and every time I tried, and I probably tried maybe three times, adjusting the technique and, and uh, maybe changing the cutter on, on a couple different times. Um, every time the tip of the tooth uh, would bend over. What I decided to do would be to try to straighten the teeth on the existing wheel. And then here I have the wheel glued to a piece of brass where the one broken tooth is sticking out. And there I'm going to address that first by filing off just a thin portion to the, the front or leading edge of that tooth and then soldering on a very thin piece of brass shim to build up and extend the broken portion of the, the tooth. Now, soldering is rightfully frowned upon in horology and the repair of clocks and watches. It's not an issue of it should never be used, but there's a couple very specific conditions in which it is permissible to solder uh, parts in in horology. One of which is, first and foremost, it should really be your last resort. You, you don't have a, another really good option. And the second condition that should be met is that it could be done in such a way that no one can tell that it's been soldered. And if you can do it that crisp and that cleanly, then it is permissible. Here are a couple pictures of the tooth um, cleaned up, not quite completed. You can tell that it's a little bit longer than the other teeth, and I'll trim that up uh, moving forward. But the next significant issue that we need to discuss is the missing detent. And based on the bridge design, we can see that this is a pivoted detent, but it's a style of pivoted detent that I have not seen before, in that uh, even in pivoted detents, there is a spring that provides positive force, pushing the locking jewel towards the escape wheel, holding the escape wheel secure. Now, all other pivoted detents that I had seen had a small spiral hairspring attached to the staff or the, the arbor of the detent that would provide this positive force. But this one didn't have a place on the base plate that showed that the hairspring would then be screwed to the, the base plate. I didn't see any evidence of that. 
So rather, I saw this notch cut in the base plate coming down from the detent that I suspected had something to do with the spring that interacted with the detent. After searching the internet, I came up with a couple pictures that confirmed my suspicion and showed me a close-up picture of how the detent is arranged and how it should look once constructed. These pictures were sufficient to help me get started in making the detent and as with all my making projects, the making starts with a, a jeweler's saw and needle files and in this case um, a pin vise and, and a small drill bit as well. The distance of those two holes are critical in that one is the pivot point and the other is the place where the locking jewel will be. And the position of the locking jewel will then determine, of course, the, the resting point or the locked position of the escape wheel. If the locked position of the escape wheel is slightly off, what will happen is that the escape wheel teeth will interrupt the free swing of the balance. So what I do is make an arbor and in place of the locking jewel I put in a brass pin which I've filed away half of it so it's a half half circle or half cylinder and uh, test the placement of the the escape wheel in relationship to the balance hole jewel and we want it to form an equilateral triangle each of those teeth being an equal distance from the pivot point of the balance. Now for a locking jewel, I have a little glass vial full of uh, what I thought were cylindrical ruby pins. And as it turns out, they're, they're not perfectly cylindrical, but actually more of a squatty D-shaped or oval shape used for lever escapements that employ a single roller. I'll take one of these ruby pins and hold it in a pin vise and using a diamond lap in my lathe I will grind off a part of this leaving the half cylinder or semicircle that we need to form a locking jewel. Now I believe the grit of this uh, disc is 1200 grit diamond and so I'll go back uh, with a boxwood lap in the lathe and grind it or polish it then with uh, a much finer grit of diamond compound so I leave a polished surface. So in this version, the passing spring and the tension spring are one and the same, and they're held on to the side of the detent with a single screw. So I have to drill in through the side and then follow that with a tap, uh, tapping a thread into the side. And for the spring, um, traditionally gold is used for the passing spring. and I'm not going to go through the effort of making a, a, a genuine gold spring. Uh, what I opt to use rather is actually a suspension spring for a Terisian pendulum uh, anniversary type clock. And I just take from my assortment the thinnest spring that is available and this measures at about five hundredths of a millimeter thick. And with that we uh, are able to create uh, a spring for this detent. I then install the detent in the watch with the balance. Uh, I've taken the hairspring off the balance. Uh, that way I can better observe the uh, interaction of the detent with the escape wheel as well as uh, the detent and the escape wheel with the, the balance and the impulse jewel, impulse roller, and see if the interaction is as it should be and make uh, appropriate adjustments to the spring, to the locking jewel, to the escape wheel. And uh, when I get it to where I think it should be, um, then I proceed to 
disassemble everything, uh, take the detent apart, and do the heat treatment of the steel. It's still in a soft or untempered state. So we do the heat treatment, and then we can proceed to the final finishing. Now, just to briefly go over my finishing process, I am holding the detent in a uh, two jaw pin vise and I'm using uh, a small bench vise with a piece of cork in it to support this as I do some uh, finish filing, clean it up, uh, make the, the detent a little bit sleeker design and then do the finishing work with a, a variety of stones both the common Arkansas oil stone slip as well as these red ones are I think they're sold as ruby files uh, you can get those new from supply houses today I leave the side of the sides of the detent um, kind of a grain finish I finish it off so that it has a smooth but it isn't a perfectly polished side and then the top I use lapping film uh, diamond lapping film to bring to a to a high polish and just for the fun of it I put a very slight bevel along the back side of the detent the side that is opposite of the spring in this final assembly, I've secured the locking jewel into the detent with a bit of shellac. And once it's set, I put it back into the watch in its uh, finished state and do one final check uh, with all the parts without the hairspring on uh, so I can observe it uh, one more time. And if it checks out, uh, and then we disassemble and clean the whole mechanism and put it all back together with the hairspring and run it. And I'll leave you with a couple video clips of uh, the watch running, a couple different perspectives. And uh, I thank you all for watching. I hope you have found this helpful. And I will catch you on the next video.